All right, so our next step is going to be to use server actions to handle all of our form uh, events and move all of the functionalities, the methods uh, onto the server side. So actually, the first thing that we're going to tackle is going to be the add to do component, this form. All right, so instead of using this handle submit method, we're going to move all of that functionality on the server side. So the first thing that we're going to do is on lib. We don't need that anymore. We know we have hooks. We're going to create a folder called actions, file, to do actions.ts. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and uh, state that we are using the server on here. And I'm just going to start importing some code. So since it is on the server, we no longer have access to the Firebase app that is initialized uh, on the client side, right? We can no longer import client app. That won't work. So we, on the server side, we actually need to initialize that every time we need to use the function. So, so I'm going to import Firebase app, the initialized app method. And I'm also going to import all of the different methods that we are going to be using in adding documents, uh, searching for collections, accessing Firestore, finding a doc, deleting a doc, and updating the doc. So I'm going to go ahead and import all of those now. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to start writing our methods that we need. So the first method that I'm going to write up is add to do, right? Okay, so for this, just like open that exports, all of our functions are going to be async functions. And then this thing is going to accept form data. Okay, uh, because it is a form, right? Which is this, this item right here. And then let me go ahead and just grab all of this, uh, some of these functionalities. So, okay, so we have that. So we're gonna grab the to-do that's actually, it's actually the form, that what's produced from the form. What we need now is we need to be able to initialize the app and use the app that's been initialized to be able to access Firebase, right, the, our, our data. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this, but I want to show you what all that entails. So we're going to need to create a, a function called get app. By the way, I would love to hear other people's solution if there are other ways to do this, more efficient ways to do this. So basically what I have set up here, this is on the server side. No problem. I have this get app. I'm creating a function because we're going to reuse this for all, all the other methods. And so what I'm going to do is let app goes await get app, right? So it should then respond to us by resolving null or the app itself. If there is no app, then we're just going to return. Okay. And then the rest is very, very easy. It's just like all the other methods that we have been using. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the code that I have over here. So now we should be good to go. We can do is we can test this out and let's go ahead and oh, hello world's already there. So let's click add. There we go. It looks like it's working. Okay. Hi there. That also works. The only thing right now is we don't have this clearing itself because we are doing a service island action. So we have to do something about that. There are a couple options. So let's see if we can figure that out right now. All right, before we move on to the next step, I do want to point out one thing that changed in the code uh, that I was not able to explain during recording is that this add to do method, give me one second here, sorry about that. This add to do method takes in also the user UID. Again, this is on the server side, right? So we really can't grab that user UID. So we have to somehow pass it on. So when you are using action and form, you do pass the form data. But in order to pass additional data to uh, the function, you can bind it to another function or to a variable. So what I did here is I created a variable called add to do with user ID. And then I bound that to the add to do app. I mean, add to do function, right, that we imported. And as you can see, then I added the auth UID as part of the data that goes to the act server side action. That's how you would provide additional data other than just what the form is expecting. Otherwise, if it was just all the form that you needed, the form data, then all I would have done is add to do here instead of using add to do with the user. So I hope that helps. Let's move on. 
All right, so if we go to our to-do ad, add to-do rather, okay, there is something that we can use. Now, typically, if we didn't need this use auth information uh, where we can bind auth UID, we could actually turn this entire component into a server component. And then we would just have to create a component button uh, that would handle the, the side where it needs to be in the client side. But in this case, because we're using use auth, it needs to be in the client side. Again, it's not a big deal. It's a small form, so it's not going to be an issue. Uh, but we, what we do need to do is we need to somehow handle state. We need to know like what's going on with the state of the submission of the form. So the way that we're going to handle this is we're going to need to create another component, which is an add button component or a submit button component separate from the form so that it can observe the form submission outside of the form, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a file. Let's call it submit button TSX. And then all we're going to do for this one is, well, let's go ahead and um, submit button component. Okay, and then we're going to grab the add to do submit button. We're going to put that into this component as a return item. Okay. All right, so that's how we're going to handle it. Okay, so it's a form type submit. And then what we need to do, give me one second here. First of all, let's, this is going to be a client component also because we are gonna leverage use form status, with, which is a, let me explain this to you in a second. So there is a use form status hook that is that we can use. And basically what it does is it is an extension of the HTML form that allows us to access the current status of the form submission, whether it's still submitting or submission has completed right so now we can use that as state so i can go ahead and add on here disable pending and then the other thing i can do is if you remember in our logic before is that we needed to reset the input and refocus so i'm going to grab that and in the submit section or submit button component I'm gonna use use effect okay and we're gonna use pending as our dependency anytime pending changes and then if for some reason if it's no longer pending so we know that it changed but if it's not pending anymore we're gonna go ahead and reset the focus for the input empty it and then reset it so in our add to do what we need to what we need to do let's go ahead and minimize this because we don't need that we need to add submit button component. There it is. And I believe that's all we need need. So let's go ahead and give it a give it a shot how it works. Alright. Um to do one. There it is. So now it's working, right? So this button is able to now observe the status of this form from outside so it's able to access the pending status of the form that's being sub submitted. So that's pretty awesome. So we have to do two and now resets focus. We can cross it, we can delete, we can edit on blur. We can add to do three. Look at that. We now have functioning component using the server side and also leveraging pending from the use form status hook. So. That's pretty cool. So the only thing really left for us to do is to add all the functionalities uh, to the server side for what we were doing in our to-do items, right? Like all these function deleting, handling the blur, and also handling the checkbox. We need to do that on the server side. Uh, we don't need to, but we're gonna do it for the sake of demonstrating the features. Let's move on. All right, so the first thing we'll tackle is we'll handle the handle delete method and move it over to the server side action method. So let's go ahead and grab the code for that so we can take a look at what we need. So on our to-do actions, let's go ahead and add the code. So if we look at delete to-do, it is expecting a user UID and it really only needs the doc ID. We're gonna get the app, just like what we did for the other one. We're gonna get the, the database 
set up the document reference for it, users, user ID and a DAC ID, find it. And then we're just gonna tell Firebase to go ahead and delete it. So on our, so let's go delete to do. So on our to do item, we need to import delete to do. Okay, awesome. And remember, it is expecting the user UID and the DAC ID. So that should be pretty easy actually to implement. All we need to do, okay, so we're gonna go delete to do, and it's expecting the auth UID, and it's also expecting the to do that ID. Okay, so it looks like that is working. We can test that to see if it's working. Uh, let's go ahead and click delete. As you can see, now it's working. It's gonna go ahead and delete that. There it is. Uh, so that's working, that's awesome. So let's add a couple more. Okay, so we can do some other testing. So let's go ahead and take care of handling of the blur, right? So let's go, let's pull it up. All right, let's add our code over here. So update to do is going to require user UID. It's going to require the DAC ID and also the new value, right? So again, the same thing. We're pulling the same uh, stuff and then we're updating to do with the new value. So that's all we need to do there in our, so we're going to import update to do. Okay. And then over here on blur, this is an event. So update to do, again, expects four items. So we're gonna do auth UID. It expects that doc ID, which is the to do ID. And then it expects the new value. Okay, awesome. So that should work. Oh, it is giving me a hard time over here. Awesome. All right, so let's change this to two. Let's blur. The only way to check that if it worked is if we add another one. As you can see, it is preserved, so which means it's working. Our next step is we're gonna do handle the checkbox. I actually added that code already, which is update status. It's the same thing, the only difference, uh, it's the same to update to do, the only difference is that it's taking in a boolean of status to update the complete status. So in our to-do item, that should be pretty quick, we are gonna go ahead and import update status. So over here, it's also an event. I'm gonna use update status, same thing. UID, to do that ID, and then it's gonna need eTarget that check value because again it is a checkbox right so if we click save we should be good to go let's click on that that does work and that does work we can delete we can update and looks like our app is ready to rock